Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 7. We open on a peaceful day in a region? Kelly Belly is having his first cup of the day. Then Kelly Belly, the master smith, bends the two ends of the latest ring together and magic sparkle, they're joined into a ring. No wonder he's the master smith. Doesn't need hammers or heat or anything. Nine for mortal men. He did it. Show's over. We did it. That's a wrap. The rings are made. We can all go. Uh-oh. Kelly Billy notices a rhinestone is missing from his hammer. Wee Mousy comes over for a visit. Hello, Mr. Mouse. That is the second time they have shown us this mouse. Are they trying to tell us that this is a Ratatouille situation? And it's actually the mouse that's the master smith? Hmm. Kelly Billy catches a glimpse of his reflection and it's not good. But why is there a mirror right there? Is he making these rings while sitting like at his vanity table? Hey lover, what you doing on the floor? Oh, <laughs> it's just the hammer was missing one of its right. Wait a second. The old gray cells playing tricks again? What? No, definitely not. Feeling overwhelmed again? The opposite. I feel like I'm finally going clear. And it's all thanks to you. Aw, oh, shucks. I didn't do anything. When the world is still, ideas can flow freely. My work is but to let them share the secrets of their song. Who is them? The ideas? Whose ideas? Are the ideas singing? What is happening? So uh, are you gonna finish soon? Getting close. How close? What's another couple days for something that'll last forever? The making of which doesn't seem to be urgent right now anyway? I'll be a bit sad when it's done, TBH. It's been a blast. All things must end. I should say that next time someone's saying bye to me. Meanwhile, in the real world, Arekion is on fire! Christine and the team decide to stop in the middle of the exposed and unprotected courtyard to have a chat about what to do. It is nice to see leaders who can keep a cool head in a crisis, but a touch more alarm and caution wouldn't go amiss. It's okay, everyone. I'm in charge now. What aren't you telling us? Kelly Belly's finally lost it. We're alone. Not alone. He meant that you don't have Kelly Belly, not that you're... Whatever, make it about you. You have proven your quality. When the time comes, I'll make sure you're rewarded. A totally normal thing to say. Sauron suddenly notices that the onslaught has paused. They notice the orcs are turning the trebuchets to face the mountains? And here I must congratulate the orcs on their absolutely unreal craftsmanship. The way those trebuchets are able to hit something so far and so high, when normally a trebuchet has a downward curving trajectory, just like chef's kiss, master craftsman, am I right? Why are they aiming for the mountain? They're damning the river! Man, that mountain crumbled fast. I feel like with it being that unstable, Aragion's days were already numbered. It was a matter of time before that thing came tumbling down. Arendir scampers up just in time to see the river dry up. Aragion is saved! Meanwhile, back in Dreamland, Kelly Belly is bonding with Mr. Mouse again. Kelly Belly decides to make a mark on his candle to help with marking time, I suppose. Meanwhile, in Khazad Doom, news has reached them that Aragion is under attack. I want the mine taken back now! Taken back? Who took it? But your son is still down there. Oh, that's right. They were staging that little protest. Okay, yeah. No! Really looking forward to seeing what Durin and Disa came up with to so thoroughly halt mining operations. Here they come. So it's just the two of them standing there, holding tools. Here come the dwarves. This ought to be quick. I can't see Durin and Disa being able to stand against that. We stand with you. That ring has taken the king's heart. I will not let it take the mountain. Since when are dwarves anti-mining? But no time to deal with the Mad King because there's an elf at the door. Let him in. Yeah, I would, but uh, this elf was banished from all dwarf lands? I wonder who it could be. Elrond! Okay, so Elrond and the Fellowship, they spent quite a long time trekking part way to Aragion and then stopped, turned around and went back to Linden to tell them about the whole orcs being on the march thing. And then Papa Elf told them that they can't defeat both Sauron and Adar, which, you know, okay, whatever. And so Elrond ran out again to Kaza Doom to tell his friend that Aregion is under attack. The boy must be exhausted. But while we're looking at maps, how did the Fellowship stumble upon the orcs marching toward Aregion when Mordor is on the other side of Aregion? I guess the orcs took the scenic route? My heart sings to see you. You got any idea what I've been through since you left? Can't possibly be more than me. Yeah, no kidding. This kid's been running back and forth the whole width of Middle Earth. I'm about to overthrow my father. Beat that. Thousands of lives are at hazard, including Kelly Belly. I need your help. Durin is dubious. I know I ask too much, but I need your axe. 
I need it now. Will Duran say yes? The suspense is terrible. He, he's gonna go this time. I hope it'll last. He, he. Meanwhile, in Eregion, the orcs are on the march. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's too late for Duran's axe to be of any use, but thanks anyway. Lots of arrows fly. Orcs are dying. Christine looks scared. The orcs are dragging something toward Eregion. What could it be? They have a Ravager! What is she doing on the battlements? What is she for? Is it for looking for the Ravager? Cause like, okay, that was pretty useful. But do they need her for that? I feel like anyone could have spotted that. Meanwhile, in Dreamland, are you done yet? You checked in like five minutes ago and he said it would take a few days. Shh, wait for it. And he points at the mouse. Cool. It's a pattern that repeats throughout the day. And look, yeah, I'm sure this is all very fascinating, but uh, we don't really have time for this. Au contraire, mon frere, we have loads of time. Just look at this candle. Hasn't burned an inch all day. So Sauron can stop time? That's pretty OP. Why hasn't he done that before? You sought peace. I gave it to you. I love how whenever people start throwing around wild accusations, Sauron just immediately cops to whatever it is they're accusing him of. Oh no, I didn't want this. What have you done to me? Done to you? You asked me for help. Thanked for it even. Now a mouse goes by and you lose your mind? Probably should have opened with that. Gaslighting doesn't really work when you've already admitted to fucking with them. What have you done to me? No emissary of the Valar would do this. Okay, so he did still think he was an emissary? but then he's been bickering with him this whole time anyway. And now he finally does something that like, does seem pretty OP and divine possibly. And that's what makes him question it. I don't get it. Who are you truly? I'm the one keeping you safe, giving you the chance to prove your worth. Now give me the nine. Kelly Billy throws the hammer through the window and suddenly he hears the sounds of the real outside. Why the illusion doesn't work when the window's broken, unclear. Kelly Billy goes outside and sees the absolute craftsmanship of those magic trebuchets assaulting Aregion. Sure is lucky the tower wasn't hit. Now Kelly Billy also doesn't look too hot. He's bleeding for some reason. Who knew ring forging could do all that? Oh snap, it looks like his tower was hit. But he was able to keep working? Unless he was actually in a time loop, which like kept him in a time from before the tower was hit and so he was safe and it wasn't an illusion, but then he wouldn't be able to make any progress because anything he did wouldn't like time isn't moving forward. Nothing, it's like the, the candle's not burning. So like nothing is happening. But then if it was just an illusion, then how did he not get injured? Or if he did get injured, like why wouldn't he notice? And like, what if something fell on him? Would he just not notice that? Like, I just, I just have so many questions. Kelly Billy's very emotional about this whole revelation. He knocks over the mithril only it's gooey. I have learned so much from you. Number one lesson, true creation requires sacrifice. Okay, so back to the illusion time loop thingy. Um, was the Mithril goopy the whole time? And it was just an illusion that made it look like Mithril? Or did he actually turn it into like a metal-like substance? Because if it was an illusion and it was goopy this whole time, I feel like he wouldn't successfully be able to work with it because even if it looks like metal to him, it is goop. So it would function like goop and not metal and like it wouldn't work with what he's trying to do. But then if it was metal, actually, then why is it goop now? Kelly Billy is not taking this well. You are he, are you not? I mean, unless he objects to being gendered, he can say yes to that without revealing anything. I have many names. Kelly Billy goes outside where people are still running around in the courtyard. Aragion really should have done more disaster drills. Like, not a victim blame, but how have they not evacuated yet? It's just, it's not like there's been hordes of people blocking the exits. It's always just been a steady trickle of extras. I mean, elves. Um, so, general carnage, Kelly Billy running around desperately looking for Christine. Her? Thank God you're okay. I have bad news. We've been tricked. What? He planned all of this to force me to forge the rings. Christine looks confused, understandably. Sauron's plan, according to Kelly Billy, was to ask him to forge the rings and then put that project in danger by getting an army to attack Eregion necessitating an elaborate time loop scheme to keep Kelly Belly unaware of the now added urgency to finishing the project, egging Kelly Belly on to finish it as Eregion is being destroyed around him and to get it done before that army that again Sauron purposely enticed to attack destroys Eregion and halts the ring project? Why would he do that? You see, I was trapped in a mine palace, but haha, -ha, the ruby gave it away and let's not forget Mr. Mouse. Uh-huh. You have to believe me. Believe what exactly? This is the thinnest part of the wall. Why did you make one part of the wall thinner? 
No one is shooting at the orcs who are trying to take down the wall. There's one guy kind of casually shooting aerials behind them. Seize him! He's Sauron! Christine does not look like she believes him. He's been lying to you all along! No, he's been helping us. No, he's Sauron! Repeating the thing doesn't improve it. If you don't believe me, make him bleed his black blood! Uh, this blood? Are we clear here? Because I don't... It got real awkward. Come on, let's get you to bed, Grandpa. This whole conversation is taking place on the battlements directly above where the guy is trying to take down the wall and the battle is generally happening. Get your hands off me! Sauron sneaks in a bit of mojo and... Whoops! <laughs> Hamlet falls off the battlements. R.I.P. Christine. Now who's gonna run everything in a region? All this can end. Finish the Nine and I will spare your city. I mean, he would have finished the Nine very willingly if you hadn't attacked the city. I feel like you're really creating more work for yourself than you need to, Sauron. What will you do with them? Create a perfect and lasting peace. I don't believe you. A horn blows in the distance. The Rohirrim! Uh, I mean, uh, the elves! The elves charge! Cut to Evil Ned, looking a little worried. Cut back to the elves, who have stopped to meaningfully exchange glances. And then it's back to charging! The orcs wheel out their secret weapon. Gal pal! Please tell me this entire army isn't gonna come to a dead halt because they have her. And that's exactly what they do. Welcome, Commander Elrond. They show Gilgalad here. Isn't he in charge? Cut to a tent where the leaders will parlay. Again, why is Elrond in charge of this negotiation? Show me the ring. Too bad I don't have it. You're a courtier, not a soldier. Says you. You should have just kept charging. She has you there. She speaks, cut out her tongue. Oh my god, please do it. I mean, um, oh no! Sauron is my enemy as much as yours. Do you see how maybe waiting until the elves came and then kind of working with them on a plan for like how to get into a region and defeat Sauron might have made you a more convincing ally. Give me what I need to defeat him and let's be done with it. You are the one who has done his bidding by attacking Eregion. So Elrond independently also came to the conclusion that it is Sauron's plan that Evil Ned and his orcs attack Eregion. Great minds think alike. Eregion has fallen into shadow. Something about the dude that calls Mordor home delivering that line. I don't know. Not Kelly Belly! You can't save Kelly Belly, but you can save Gal. Why does she need saving if you're all allies? Take my offer. Leave Sauron to me. By the by, did anyone ever tell you you got your mother's good looks? Is he trying to insult his mother? If even a fragment of her wisdom is in your veins. In his veins? Is that where wisdom goes? You must know you can't win against me. Maybe, but a whole bunch of orcs are going down with us. They're not scared to die. And you don't mind them dying? They don't mind? Just give me the ring and Gal lives, okay? Do we have a deal? Elrond super conspicuously removes a brooch. Ask me again in the field when the neck with a blade against it is yours. Yeah, or he can just kill you both right here and now. Why wouldn't he? Because you do not seem willing to cooperate. Fine, be that way. I'll see you later with Gal's head on a pike. Well, if that's how it's gonna be, I wanna say goodbye. Sure. So the elves charged at the orcs, and the orcs were like, guess what, we have Gal, pal. And so all of the elves just came to a dead halt, and then Elrond goes to parlay with the orcs, and then tells the orc leader to eat shit, and then they're gonna do war anyway. But the orc leader's like, yup, sounds good. Meet you out there in battle mode. We'll resume the charge then. What is happening? Forgive me. When? Are you sure Shakespeare didn't write this? And Elrond goes in for a kiss! I'm sorry, when has there been romantic tension between these two? I completely missed that. I swear she had more chemistry with evil Ned. The orcs are all awkwardly lurking. So romantic. Elrond and his number two, casually walking out of the camp while the orcs hiss and snarl like actors hired for Universal's Halloween Horror Nights. We're outnumbered ten to one. Why so confident? Because I know something he doesn't. Then they wisely switch to Elvish. The dwarves are gathering, and at daybreak, you're gonna lead them to attack. Outstanding. Because if this is the strategy, and he's your number two who's gonna lead them, why is he only learning about this now, when you're in the enemy camp? Why hasn't he heard about this before? Also, daybreak? That is oddly specific. And it's not a lot of time. Weren't you talking to Durin like yesterday? That is not a lot of time for him to muster a whole ass army. I mean, when you left him, he was mid-coup prep. I really wouldn't bank on him being able to see his command from his dad and also muster army for you in like 24 hours. Ride to them now while I hold the fort here. Ride to where? With what plan? Why didn't you discuss this sooner? I just... <sighs> Meanwhile, in Khazad Doom, Durin is getting ready to do the most important pep talk of his life. Warriors of Khazad Doom! 
He walks forward. Wait, he just up and started shouting? This isn't like a gathering? He's just talking to whoever happens to be nearby? I don't even know if there's warriors in earshot. Right now, the great story of our time is being written. Is that really the thing that's gonna motivate them? Surely telling them that lives are at stake would do the trick. We cut back to Gal holding that thing Elrond super stealthily gave her. And it's down to us whether the story will end happy? Or sad. Gal still working on her lock picking. Luckily no one is guarding her. More random dwarves gather closer to hear what this dude is shouting about. Sauron the Stoneheart. Kinda underselling it with that title, don't you think? Who stole the seven smithing secrets from our forebearers has returned. Why are we only now learning about these smithing secrets? Forging rings to enslave us! Cut back to Kelly Belly, finishing the ring project, but under close supervision. And all of Middle Earth! So if everyone knows the rings are evil, how is this plan gonna work? Like, I know like greed and temptation and all that, but like, the elves cannot defeat him. Not without us. I just wanna say again that Durin is addressing a random group of miners and other folks that just happen to be in the vicinity. And Sauron knows this. Cut back to Elrond, still leaving the camp, still being harassed by those Horror Nights actors. He thinks that by stoking our greed, he can turn our hearts to ash and sweep us from the field without a fight. Surely this whole tricksy plan of his to get the orcs to attack Eregion indicates he very much plans to fight. We are stronger than he knows. And all 30 dwarves are like, hell yeah, brother. For there is something all dwarves prize more than riches. Dwarven loyalty is stronger than sorcery. As your PR advisor, I recommend not going with the loyalty language because you are asking them to betray the king that they're supposed to be loyal to. It's just bad optics. The small crowd is real fired up, giving all the hell yeahs and amens a man could wish for. Durin moseys over to a Vista lookout point, and what do you know, it looks like his speech was being broadcast to the entirety of Khazad Doom, and they're all super ready to fight! Though it's not actually been made clear to them where they will fight, or who they will fight, or why they will fight. But hell yeah, they're ready to go! We march for Eregion! It is lucky that speech went over so well, because they need to be heading over there like immediately like do not pass go do not collect a hundred dollars you are going there now meanwhile in Eregion, elrond is giving everyone the extremely actionable command of defend the city his horse leaps into the air and kicks an orc they sure don't make horses like they used to general fighting and carnage the orc camp appears to be overrun with elves was it necessary to go for their camp first i feel like you'd want to make straight for Eregion. Oh no, the orc killed the horsey. Now this is personal. Elrond gets an Arwen-esque boo-boo on his cheek, like father, like daughter. Die. And Elrond releases the catapult that the dying orc is on, which makes both him and the projectiles loaded onto it go flying towards Eregion and hit the walls they're trying to keep from falling. Not the wisest move there, Commander Elrond. Cut back to the horse. I'm sorry, but he's just no barrack. Elrond is really feeling this one. Sure hope there aren't any elves dying nearby and have to watch him weep over a horse. And we're off again. Orcs are still trying to get past that wall. Looks like they've almost got the Ravager up and running. I do love the way that orcs that are operating the Ravager are under no cover whatsoever and no one is shooting at them. But I'm sure glad Elrond made wrecking their camp his first priority. And suddenly it's nighttime. Lord Father, the wall is stronger than we thought. We may not breach it before morning. The elf is faring better than you thought. He's already destroyed five of our trebuchets. Not before launching one himself. <laughs> Many are dying, what do we do? Sauron must not escape. Bring down the wall at any cost. Dad, you told us you loved us. With all that is left of my heart. It's because I love you that I want you to die in battle. Trust me, better that than becoming Sauron's slave. The orcs look unconvinced by this speech. Evil Ned heads into the tent where he left Galpal unguarded and- What's this? She's gone? She's still in the camp. Find her. Gal left the brooch thingy next to the body of the orc she killed. Guess she wanted Evil Nen to know exactly how she managed to pull it off, so he'll be on the lookout for her next time. Cut to Gal Pal sneaking through the camp. An orc lady stops Gal and demands she help with carrying one dead orc, which requires four of them. Looks like they've decided to burn their dead during the battle, which I suppose is efficient. Evil Ned stops by to say a few words. Gal seems moved by this, but decides she needs to get a move on. Two orcs randomly decide to follow her. Orc lady stops her again. Oh no, she's been discovered and she's surrounded! Arrows hit the other orcs. Gal isn't stopping to ask questions. She parkours her way on out of there and runs into Arendir! Whatever force it was that brought you here, soldier, I'm grateful for it. Come, I know a hidden way into the city. 
We have to find Sauron. Couldn't tell Elrond about your little secret passage? I'm here for him. Try to move against him now. The cost will be your life. Is it necessary to talk like Yoda all the time? Couldn't you have just said, it's dangerous? He can have it. He has taken everything else from me. And by everything else, do you mean regional manager lady who died? Arondir. Wait, she knows who he is? Why did she call him soldier before? Kind of rude. There is a dearth of elven heroes this night. It would be a pity to lose another. And the true fight with Adar will come later. Oh yeah? You been peeking at the script again, Missy? Meanwhile, in Casa Doom, Durin is all dressed for battle. The army has assembled at the West Gate. In record time. Prince Durin! Your father! He turned his axe on my men! He's gonna dig and loose the beast! Do they all believe that there's a beast living underneath their feet in Casa Doom? And they're all fine with it as long as they stop digging? Disa? She says you have to recall the army because it requires an entire army to stop one man from digging? But I promised Elrond you take that army to a region and Casa Doom might be gone when you get back. Dun, dun, dun! Meanwhile, in a region, be not afraid. This too shall pass. Kelly Belly is still working on the rings. Is like, whatever, dude. I promise you, when Middle Earth is healed and its people see what we did here, destroyed a city and made some jewelry, all our sufferings will be worth it. Our sufferings? Yeah, sure. It hurts me to hurt you. The way you've hurt tons of others? The way Morgoth hurt me. Do you know what it's like being tortured by a god? Honestly, no. Not really. I see the end. I've always seen it. But his end was different. He wanted to destroy. I wanted to perfect. Listen, man, I don't really know what you're looking for from me here. Pain almost became a reward. A game. A contest to see who was mightier. And you're doing it to me now because you chose this. Come again? I need the rings. You forced me to force you. I'm clearly the real victim here. You have got to be joking. You only have yourself to blame. You really are the great deceiver. You can deceive even yourself. <laughs> Finish them. Kelly Billy gazes at his work and has an epiphany. He starts yoinking up the rings and he throws them in the fire. Meanwhile, the battle rages on. Back to Kelly Billy. He takes the rings out of the fire and finds they are... Quite cool. Plan B, hide them in a baggie. He tries to free himself from his shackles, but is unsuccessful. Somehow all this commotion doesn't catch Sauron's attention. Kelly Billy decides the only way out is to cut off his own thumb? Who's mightier now, bitch? Kelly Billy's making a break for it, and whoops, he falls off the stairs. When his crew finds him, they're like, damn, man, you really lost it. You need to pat itself for this one ASAP. Look at the state of him. They're taking him away by order of Anatar, Lord of Eregion. Release him! That is Lord Celebrimbor, greatest of elven smiths. Now where did this bitch come from? But the Lord of Eregion ordered. This is the Lord of Eregion. Is it really you? She spots his missing thumb. Sauron? More rings? Nine. He shows her his wee baggy. To enslave the world of men as he enslaved me. It's my fault. No. No, I knew the vibes were off, but I didn't care and that's on me. <laughs> Same. There's a distant scream. It's him. Use the tunnel I used. Get out of here. Why didn't everyone in Eregion escape that way? Was it so important to preserve the city? No, you go. She just got here. He'll figure it out. He'll come for the rings. I'll buy you some time. I won't let you face him alone. Here's an idea. Why don't you both go? He will not be alone. It would be touching if you weren't just about to lock him up. I'm sorry I brought him here. I wasn't strong enough. Maybe no one is. But maybe we should try to remember that the opposite of dark isn't strong. The opposite of dark is light. <laughs> Kelly Billy heads back. Gal puts her game face on as she tucks the evil rings into her bra. Battle rages on. They're gonna get through the wall, sir, aren't they? Now don't be so negative. A single arrow from you could make the difference. Elrond powers his way through so she has a clear shot at the wall wrecking crew. Finally, someone trying to do something about these guys. The girlie gets shot down before she can shoot her shot. Almost ironic. Guess that's it. No one could possibly- But wait, she's going for it. She's taking the shot. Elrond is watching, doing nothing to assist, and bullseye! What did she hit? Unclear. But it went boom, and that is good. Although having it go boom that close to the wall could be bad. But it was good, so 
Send him in. But he'll kill our side too. Do it. Arendir to the rescue. Having one more elf will definitely turn the tide of this battle. Welcome aboard, Arendir. The elves notice the orcs are fleeing and realize, troll! Meanwhile in the tower, Sauron is throwing a tantrum. Kelly Belly comes in. You can look, but you won't find them. Is taunting him really a good idea at this point? Like what good could come from that? You're gonna get them and put them in my hand. Oh uh, no. Your hand will never touch another ring again, ha <laughs> ha. Awfully smug for a dude who knows the rings are still in Eregion and has like, what, five guys with him for backup? You are hereby under arrest by order of... <clears throat> I find your lack of faith disturbing. You think it's only you I can mind control? Sauron makes the elves turn the swords on each other. An elegant solution, I must say. The captain guy tries to stab him, but Sauron dodges, grabs a sword, and kills the guy. A valiant, if stupid, thing to do. R.I.P. Captain Dude. Meanwhile, battle still rages on, but now with trolls. He must not reach the wall. Sorry, wrong movie. Cut to the orcs being mad at Orc Daddy for sending out the troll. When did the orcs get to be such snowflakes? Back to the battle, we're still trying to bring the troll down. Meanwhile, Elrond is trying to mess up that wall wrecking thingy. Commander, look out! Yeah, thanks, pal. Definitely wouldn't have noticed that giant troll if you hadn't pointed it out. The troll rams the wrecker thing into the wall, which honestly seems like what they should have been doing this whole time. Papa Elf to the rescue! Go back to your hill and be buried. Go back to your hill and be buried. Cause you're dead and need to be in a grave? No, I don't get it. The weight of Arendir jumping on him is enough to knock him over. Who knew Arendir was so heavy? Elrond finally makes the kill shot. Elrond spots Papa Elf. My king, you shouldn't be here. A king's place is wherever the need is greatest. Oh, fuck off. March with me. Are these the reserves? Why weren't these guys already fighting out there? Suddenly, the sun is rising. That shit was not gradual. The dwarves, the dwarves are coming. Look to the north. Isn't Khazad Doom to the south of Aragion? The elf rider timed it so he'd be riding atop that hill just as the sun is rising. Uh oh, elf rider's not looking too good. Durin recalled their army. What? No, he'd never. He's for sure coming. The orcs are marching despite the sun. Again, orcs in their sun era. Love that for them. Looks like of that elven army, there remains like 30 guys? Damn, even if the dwarves did come, I would say you have well and truly lost this battle. Durin will come. Durin will come. Durin will come. Repeating the thing doesn't improve it. Fighting, fighting, fighting. Are we still pretending they have a shot? Cause they're outnumbered like a hundred to one. Oh no, evil Ned got Arendir. R.I.P. And the wall is breached, finally. More fighting, but now in slow-mo as Elrond watches and does nothing because his friend didn't save his ass and he's sad about it. Evil Ned comes by to say hello, lifts Elrond by the throat. Never make war in anger. He throws Elrond and cut to him holding the ring. Elrond said he didn't have it. Was he lying? Dun, dun, dun. And that's the end of the episode. Wow, what a thrilling episode. So much happened. We had a battle and the, the Rings of Men were finished, and... Yep, that's what happened. Can't wait to see what happens next week.